Welcome to the Inland Sports TV show. My name is Pep Fernandez. Jeff Gorham is not here. He's hanging out with his son Connor tonight. A much deserved night off hanging out with the con man. Hey, welcome to the show. Big, big show. We're in the final week of high school basketball, the league season. So we're going to crown league champions. We're getting ready for the CIF Southern section playoffs. So we're going to spend a little time on high school basketball. We're also going to talk California Baptist basketball with Rachel V Hill from the WAC Digital Network. We're also going to go inside the Lancers as we take a look at the CBU women's water polo team playing some of the best teams in the country right out of the gate. We're going to talk about that as well. Plus the latest on UC Riverside basketball. Landon Donovan, the Riverside native, is back in professional soccer, but it's not what you think. And Joe Kelly, the pride of Corona High School and UC Riverside, joins the Dodgers officially and there's a story behind the number he has for the Dodgers and his Inland Empire route. So we got a lot to get to on the show and we start with high school basketball and the league title races. This is the final week of the league season and there's only a handful of leagues really still undecided at this point. The Southwestern League, Temecula Valley has a one game lead on Great Oak. So here's what happened. Great Oak beat Temecula Valley head to head, but then Great Oak lost to Murrieta Mesa by one. So the Golden Bears still one game up on the Wolfpack there, seven and one. Great Oak is at six and two in the Southwestern League. That one's coming down the home stretch, but they do not play head to head again this season. How about the Sun Belt League? Paris and Orange Vista. That'll be a Wednesday night special deciding that one. Maybe the league title that we were all looking forward to is the one that's not happening now. Wednesday night, the Rancho Verde will be hosting Notre Dame in Ivy League play, and that was shaping up to be the Ivy League championship. They were on a collision course throughout league play. We thought it would be Notre Dame playing for a share of the league title and Rancho Verde playing for the outright championship, but it's all over. The Rancho Verde is your Ivy League champion already heading into that final game, which I should mention will be live on Teen Vision. So you can check that out. Make sure you follow Teen Vision on Twitter. And of course, Inland Sports will tweet out the link as well. But Notre Dame and Rancho Verde going head to head on Wednesday night. But Notre Dame stumbles into that game because of what happened against Paloma Valley last night. Angel, uh, and I'm sorry, Anthony, play the video and we're going to show you it's a uh, Tyson Ramsey hitting the game winner for Paloma Valley. Bedlam at Paloma Valley. Look at the half court shot with no time left at the buzzer. They were tied at 62 and Paloma Valley wins 65 62. The final score. What a dramatic finish between Paloma Valley and Notre Dame. So Rancho Verde is your league champion. Notre Dame's going to finish second. And with that win for Paloma Valley, they're tied with Riverside Poly for third in the Ivy League. Paloma and Polly going head to head on Wednesday night. That's a big game there uh, in the Ivy League. Let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, top 10 rankings going into this week. So this is not count what happened on Monday night. Rancho Christian Centennial, the Rancho Verde, Notre Dame and Polly, a couple Ivy League schools. Redlands East Valley moves up a little bit to number six. There's Roosevelt at seven. Temecula Valley slides uh, a couple spots down to eight after that loss to Great Oak. Hillcrest is at nine, and there's Great Oak at ten. I should mention Redlands East Valley is your Citrus Belt League champion. They beat Cajon on Saturday night, so that gives the Wildcats the outright title. Rev is your Citrus Belt League champ. All right, uh, back here live in the studio. So we're talking about the CIF Southern section open division, and we've got three Inland Empire schools still in the open division watch list. They're all division one, of course, Rancho Christian, Centennial, and the Rancho Verde, all uh, in the open division watch list, all division one, and they're all highly ranked. Uh, let's see. Rancho Christian's number two, Centennial's number three, Rancho Verde's number seven. So they all have a, a really good shot at going to the open division playoffs. If you want that, and I think they all do, but it's going to be very, very tough in the land of the open division. Let's take a picture of his name is Isaiah Mobley. And if you're a local basketball fan here in the IE, you know who this is. He is now a McDonald's All-American, and it doesn't get any better than that. That means the best of the best in the entire country. Congratulations to Isaiah Mobley. Can't wait to see his brother Evan Mobley. He's only a junior. He's a stud as well. That's why Rancho Christian is just so, so good this season. 
and they're going to play. Rancho Christian is going to take a break from league play. They're going to play Sierra Canyon on Saturday at Pasadena City College. That's a huge game. That could be your CIF Southern Section Open Division Championship when it's all said and done. Huge, huge game. Rancho Christian, one of the best in the country. They went to the tournament championship, the Montverde uh, Academy Tournament uh, over the weekend. Very, very good team, one of the best in the country, and look for them in the CIF Southern Section Open Division. All right, the San Bernardino Cardinals are not going to the playoffs this season, but they've got a great player named Trayvon Davis. Anthony, roll the video here, because Trayvon Davis, he set a new Cardinal City record. It used to be 72 points in one game by Matt Bradley. Oh, no. Trayvon Davis did a little bit better. Trayvon Davis dropped 75 points on Vista Del Lago. Trayvon Davis did a little bit of everything. Three pointers uh, in transition, had some dunks. Trayvon Davis was 75 points. And listen, Cardinal City, they've had some real legends wear that San Bernardino uniform, but none have scored as many points in one game as Trayvon Davis, 75 against Vista Del Lago. Unbelievable. All right, back here live in studio. We're going to talk uh, real quickly about uh, the high school girls basketball scene as well. A lot of the uh, league titles have already wrapped up. The one that's kind of up in the air, and it's going to be live on IEMG, and Anthony, you can punch that up now too. Yukaipa against Cajon. That is your Citrus Belt League Championship. We will carry it live on IEMG TV3. Uh, Cajon has a one-game lead on Yukaipa, so the T-Birds can earn a share of the CBL crown. Meanwhile, Cajon could win the outright title. Leon Washington doing another great job with this young Cowgirls team. Pretty young across the board, but they're really coming into, into their own this season, and they could wrap up the outright Citrus Belt League championship. Now, in the land of the Big Eight, it got really crazy last week as King hosted Roosevelt. King looking to win out. King is actually on the for the girls side in the open division watch list, so the best of the best in the southern section. But King and Roosevelt tied at 50 when Alexis Mead was fouled shooting the three pointer, which is seconds left. And Alexis Mead hit all three free throws. King won 53-50. They will be your Big 8 League champion. And it looks like King will go into the CIF Southern Section Open Division playoffs. Let's check in with the King High School Wolves. Uh, it was a big win. I'm very disappointed with the way we played and the way we started the game. But uh, we fought through it, and good teams do that. Great teams fight through it, and we did just that. We got the W. It wasn't pretty, but we got the W. We, we've been very successful because we start well and we finish well. Today we didn't do one of those. We didn't start the ball game well. But um, luckily we finished well. We have some great clutch shooters. Uh, Lexi with the last three free throws was huge. Uh, and, and then she also hit a three to tie it up so um, big game for her as well I told them I pulled my team together and I said we're not losing this we needed this I mean law happy between our team and man we just wanted it so bad and I knew that we needed this game to push through to the rest of the season so congrats to the King High School girls basketball team. Big win against Roosevelt, and they just keep on winning and winning. And listen, the Big 8 League is very tough for girls basketball, so that really means something. Uh, so congrats to Jesus Martinez and the Lady Wolves. And let's sneak in a little soccer. Why not? The Arlington High School boys soccer team continues their great season. They are back-to-back -back Ivy League champions where they come from behind victory against Riverside Poly. 2-1 was that final score. Anthony, let's show him that video. A little bit of celebration by the Lions, and why not? Uh, they already had the banner made. That's what I can't get over. It already says 2019, like they knew it was going to happen. That's a very good Arlington team. Congratulations to head coach Kevin Watson in Arlington. Right now, they're number two in the CIF Southern Section Division and two rankings, so they will be one of the favorites come the CIF Southern Section playoffs. The soccer brackets will come out on Saturday and the basketball brackets will come out Sunday. So next week, right here on the Inland Sports TV show, we will break down a lot of those playoff matchups for hoops and soccer. When we come back here on the Inland Sports TV show, we will check in with Rachel Vigil from the WAC Digital Network. We'll be right back. What's going on guys? This is Ray Bass from Boost Performance Training. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled Quick 
quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods, they have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And welcome back to your favorite show, the Inland Sports TV show. Join us live from the WAC Digital Network. It's Rachel V. Hill. Rachel, how are you? Good. How are you doing? We're doing great. We love covering California Baptist basketball, the men's and the women's basketball teams. We know you're on top of the basketball scene in the WAC, so we want to get your thoughts. Just kind of what are the general first impressions of CBU in their first year in the WAC? Because we've covered them for years now. They've had a lot of success at a lot of different levels. Now they're Division One. Now they're in the WAC. And correct me if I'm wrong, they, they seem to be competitive right out of the gate. What's kind of your thoughts from the WAC? Honestly, I totally agree. They have been super competitive. They've made it a bunch of fun to watch, that's for sure. It's been, I mean, the fact that they upset New Mexico State was huge. I think it really showed that they're going to be a dominant force. And I'm personally sad that they're not going to be able to compete for the WAC tournament, but I understand all the rules by the NCAA and everything. But I definitely think they're going to be a contender for the WAC title. Yeah, we were there at the CBU Event Center the night they played New Mexico State, and it was unreal. They played a great game. The atmosphere was electric. Um, CBU basketball, obviously a big deal here in Riverside. And it feels like they, they fit right in with the WAC because there's always that maybe that little bit of apprehension like, okay, are they going to be competitive enough? I mean, there's tough places to play in the WAC like Grand Canyon. I know they got Utah Valley and Seattle this week. It's not easy, but it feels like they're fitting right in with the rest of the pack. 
I honestly couldn't agree more. You know, I went out to Grand Canyon for their Midnight Madness before the tur- or before the season started, and it was crazy. I've never been in an arena like that. I mean, all of the kids, and I say all of them, had lined up to go inside. I had to move out of the way and ha- make sure that somebody could block me so I didn't get run over. So the atmosphere for WAC schools is a lot different than I think people think it is. Um, and CBU, it seems like they have a great event center. It seems like their fans show up. I mean, they were sold out for GCU, which says a lot about the program. And they have a lot of support with the program, too, which is great to see. Um, but I think people kind of forget when you're coming from D2 to transition to D1 that you have to be able to compete in D1 to even be considered, and they're able to compete. I mean, they were competing with Grand Canyon back in D2, so I think they're going to do well. Speaking of Grand Canyon, I know I've been to Grand Canyon as well, and, and their, their home fans, are it's insane. They all dress up, and they've got choreographed things going on. It's just insane, but I know CBU would eventually like to be there, and they're well on their way. Their, their home fans uh, are incredible, but you mentioned the WAC tournament. I want to uh, sneak this question in here, Rachel, because um, there's still time that you can t- was it take a picture of your pet wearing their favorite WAC team and win tickets? Yes. You can. Yeah, you can still do that up until tomorrow. So at midnight tonight, it's over. So if you want, submit. You can follow my hashtag. It's at Rachel Veal or my Twitter handle at Rachel Veal 24 or use the hashtag Hey Rachel and you can show me your pets. I just got a puppy. So I thought it was a great idea to do that kind of contest and you can win two all session tickets. So it's a great opportunity. The road to what do you call it? Whack Vegas, right? To the conference tournament? Yes. All right. Also, I wanted to ask you about Milan Aqua. He's a Washington State transfer, and he's really, at least around here, and I know in the WAC, uh, he's kind of been the man for CBU this season. Um, you know, when you see Milan Aqua, and I know you, you know, you do the highlight show in your studio, so you probably see a lot of Milan Aqua in video. <laughs> um, he feels like, I feel like he's one of those players that you don't see come along very often. I mean, what, what's it like being able to, you know, showcase him and, and what you do for the WAC Digital Network and knowing that he's probably, um, you know, I want to say like a, like a Pac-12 or an ACC type caliber player, but he's playing in the WAC. You know, we I had talked to him last week, and I had said his career high was 13 points when he is at Washington State, but he got 36 points against New Mexico State, which was huge. And he said it's just surrounding himself with good people. Um, the atmosphere is different, and I think that's what CBU does as a whole, and that's what makes them such a good university, is that they really work on like the philosophy of making their players better by personal but also player development, which really just stands out for me. Um, I mean, he's fantastic. Fantastic. You watch him play and his skill level is incredible. The fact that he can hit some of his three pointers from way beyond the arc shows, I mean, it's NBA level, Um, but he does a really great job and he's a super nice guy too. So I always appreciate that. And Rachel, to kind of piggyback off of that, um, we're big Rick Croy fans here on the Inland Sports Show. Um, One of the bright young coaches in the game. Um, He's so passionate. He loves his players. Um, What what did did Milan have anything to say about Coach Croy? What's kind of your impressions um, of his maybe coaching style or what he brings to the CBU men's basketball team? You know, I've talked to Milan about that, and he says it's a family mentality. Everything about the organization is family, and that starts with your head coach. Uh, So it's been really great to see. I mean, that's what you like to see. I hate seeing programs where the coach isn't always the greatest to the players or to his staff, and it seems like Rick Corey is so good to his staff, and it seems like the community loves him. I'm glad you guys love him because, really, he is fantastic. Um, But just the fact that he understands basketball will eventually end for these athletes and that it's important to raise them up as good men first. And I think that's really important. All right. The road to WAC Vegas is upon us. And make sure uh, if you are a CBU fan out there and you've got a pet, put them in that Lancer gear, hashtag Lance up. And, uh, and Rachel, one more time, what is your Twitter handle? It's at Rachel V Hill 24. There it is, folks. Rachel, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Inland Sports TV show. Thank you guys so much for having me. Have a great night. Okay, that's Rachel V. Hill from the WAC Digital Network, and we'll be back with more Inland Sports Show. What's going on, guys? Coach Bass here. To all you football players, as season comes to an end, don't miss the opportunity to get better this offseason. We're rolling out our overtime strength training program. Our overtime program is a three, six-week cycle that will be starting on January 7th. We're going to have three levels, beginners, intermediate, and advanced uh, for elementary 
middle, and high school athletes. And what you can expect with our overtime program is what you can always expect here at Boost. Strength development, speed development, we're gonna be doing performance testing and nutritional guidance to help you guys get bigger, stronger, and faster. So overtime's coming back, it's starting January 7th, and it's gonna be better than ever. If you'd like to find more information about our overtime program that has served a lot of great athletes in the Corona Norco area, feel free to contact us directly through Facebook, uh, on Instagram at Boost Training, or Twitter, Boost underscore Training. Or reach out to us directly here at our gym at 951-532-4904. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. Right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. to the Inland Sports TV show. Another big thanks to Rachel Hill from the WAC Digital Network. Look for her show. Uh, it's called Road to WAC Vegas. You're going to love it. And uh, highlights and interviews from across the WAC. If you're a big basketball fan, it's the place to be. All right, we're going inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. And this time we're taking a look at CBU women's water polo. The Lancers have had an incredible tough schedule to start the season against some of the top ranked teams in the entire country, UCLA, USC, uh, Northridge. I think a, a Santa Barbara match was in there as well, UC Irvine. So let's go inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling with the CBU women's water polo team. I think for us, I mean, in the early part of the year, it's it's to grow and to build and really see what we have as a team. We have a young group this year, uh, only three seniors on this team, so a lot of a uh, lot of underclassmen, sophomores, juniors, getting a lot of play time. And so for us, uh, being able to test ourselves against the best is uh, you know always beneficial because when you get to March and April, you you know you're going to see top 25 teams. Uh, you know we've got LMU, San Diego State, UOP in the conference, so um, you know trying to match that level at the end of the season, we know we got to get pushed around a little bit at the beginning of the season. I think for us, I mean, last weekend going to the Santa Barbara tournament, it was really good. Um, you know, we, we were a little nervous in our first game, I think, and, you know, didn't have the, the best first game that we wanted. Um, bounced back on the second day, um, played a, a great game against Northridge, you know, got a two-goal win against them, number 18, um, and then played UCLA in the last game of the tournament and was able to, you know, put in eight goals, generate uh, offense throughout the game, and um, didn't play timid or scared, which for a young group, you want to be able to, to see that early on in the season, kind of the confidence of being able to match up against number one and number three. Um, so I think consistent scoring. Our goalie play has been awesome the first couple weeks. Um, you know, Grace Ramirez has done a really good job for us uh, last year and coming into this year. So um, a lot of good, a lot of good building block pieces to start with. 
so we need to learn how to get out there and be aggressive right in the first half and not wait until the third and fourth quarters and these kind of games that challenge us is in a um, that's like what helps us learn how to play in our conference games um, I think we've learned to like rely on each other more so we can't do as much one-on-one -on -one if they're so much stronger but we can rely on each other to drive and get each other open and make the quick passes and so really it's a team effort I think those teams like against USC and like the top four teams I think um, like having that mentality of like not holding anything back and I think that really helped us with um, today's game and it's going to help us a lot with the CMS not going like still playing at our level and knowing how to play against these tough teams is going to help us in the future and like have that competitive toughness. I think communication that's always a, the most difficult thing for us like communicating I think that's for every team as well it's just getting comfortable with each other and these tough teams we really have to trust each other and know what we're doing and these tough teams um, they really push us to our limits so we just have to play strong. Oh no, I love this team. I mean, I love previous teams as well, but this one just shows we're all young and we all have that potential to like grow and get better. So um, we have a lot of potential, I feel. The Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. Quick update on CBU men's basketball like we just spoke with Rachel Vigil. Uh, a couple of tough losses to not only uh, Cal State Bakersfield, but also Grand Canyon. And now the Lancers go on the road. This is a tough road trip. They got Utah Valley and Seattle on the same trip. We got a little video from their game against Grand Canyon. Go ahead, Anthony, punch that up. Grand Canyon, always tough, one of the favorites in the WAC to win it. And uh, it was a, a great electric crowd. Like Rachel had mentioned, Grand Canyon University is a very special place for college basketball. The fans get into it. It's loud. It's nuts. Um, they really have that home court advantage. And CBU is it's heading in that direction. They've already, you know, selling out games, and they got a great student section with the crazies. Um, I think we have a little bit of video from that game, CBU and Grand Canyon University from this past Saturday night. I know it was a loss, but we still got a little video. It was Grand Canyon with 51 points in the second half. Unbelievable as uh, Grand Canyon uh, pulled out a win in that one. Uh, we don't have the video, but I can tell you it was 90 to 73. And again, big road trip coming up for the men. And the women have a Thursday morning game at the CBU Event Center against Utah Valley. We'll be back on the Inland Sports TV show. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. Focus on the customer here. Right. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time.
And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. Let's wrap things up talking a little UC Riverside basketball. The Highlanders coming off a, a tough loss at UC Irvine. The Anteaters, if you follow Big West basketball, the Anteaters are very, very good. Now UCR is back home. Couple home games. In fact, a four game stretch of home games. Uh, this week they have Cal Poly. That's Thursday night. And then UC Davis on Saturday night. I think we got a picture from uh, the UCR game down in Irvine. The Eaters, wow, especially in the Brent Event Center, they are so tough. They got great guard play. They got great size. UC Irvine is going to play UC Santa Barbara this week, which is a huge game in the Big West Conference. But if you asked me, my, my own personal feelings, UC Irvine is probably the best team uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. But we'll find out. They're going to take on the Gauchos, and that should be a great game. But for UCR, Cal Poly Thursday night, and then Saturday against Davis. Now, some local soccer news. Landon Donovan who is a Redlands native. He's from Redlands. He's one of us. He's from the Inland Empire. He has signed a professional contract with the San Diego Soccers of the Major Arena Soccer League. Now, this did not sit well with local soccer fans because we have the Ontario Fury right here in the Inland Empire. Anthony, we got a picture of Landon down there uh, with the San Diego Soccers. Let's check that out because here's the deal. Landon Donovan was asked, you know, why he chose the San Diego Soccers, <coughs> excuse me, and he said, uh, well, San Diego is his, his new hometown. And that did not sit well because, again, he's a Redlands native, he's an Inland Empire guy, and I know a lot of people were not happy for the simple fact that, A, he said, you know, San Diego's his new hometown. Uh, he's been down there for a couple years now, uh, hanging out in the San Diego parts. Uh, but, yeah, he, he also, he could have signed with the Fury, I guess, but he's going with the San Diego Soccers. I know he's been instrumental in helping or trying to get Major, uh, major League Soccer to San Diego, but now he's playing for the Soccers, he's playing for the other guys, and they're going to play at the Fury in April. So once we get a little closer to the match, we're going to have uh, some fury on this show. Uh, I think we're going to do the uh, general manager, Bernie Lillivaw, to talk about Landon Donovan coming back to his IE roots, but playing for the bad guys. So we'll talk about that as well. And finally, Joe Kelly, the pride of Corona High School and UC Riverside. He has signed with the Dodgers. It's a three-year contract. We knew that. But now we know what number he's going to wear for the Dodgers. It's number 17, and that goes back to his days at UCR as a pitcher for the Highlander. So here's a little bit of Joe Kelly putting on his new uniform and talking about the number 17. In the sports. I, this is the first time I see my number in person. I love it. I was like, uh, when I showed up, I was like, you guys have the jersey for me? Because I didn't think I'd have one. I was like, yeah, we got it. I was like, is my number on it? I'm like, yeah, your number's on it. But it's cool. This is the same number I had in college. So it's the first time I actually had to like pick my number. So like obviously a young guy in St. Louis, I came up and they gave me a number 58. And then when I went to Boston, obviously Papelbon was 58 before that. And I was like, I can't wear that number. That guy was too good. So I was like, I'll, they gave me 56. So I never really got to pick my number. And now I get to pick my number. So I'm kind of going back to cool. UC Riverside colors and I wore 17. So I'm kind of excited to have that. So Joe Kelly bringing it back to his UCR days. Uh, a big thanks to Rachel Vigil from the WAC Digital Network for joining us. We appreciate her time talking CBU basketball here on the show. Again, Jeff is with his son, the con man tonight. He's got the night off, but we'll be back here in studio at Teen Vision TV 16 next Tuesday for another edition of the Inland Sports TV show. My name is Pep Fernandez, and we'll see you next time.